So I'd call him up and go, hey, who's, who's the guy, you know, who's cutting your grass? I don't know who the grass man is. I find out. <laughs> I called the next guy, hey, who's cutting your grass? I don't know who the grass man is. I'm like, Phew, I'm going to be the grass man. Yeah. Like no brainer, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so I got me a closed trailer, grass man on it. And then I get a letter in the mail that I was infringing on someone else's name. Uh -huh. That was my first lesson in <laughs> business. What is up, everybody? Joe Everest, the fence expert, and you know Dan Blanc, the fence king. Dan, I appreciate you coming out to share your fence story. Uh, we actually just got done recording it, and yeah. I think there's some pretty good stuff in there. I really do. I hope so, man. I hope it helps a lot of people. Well, we, we not only talked about your story, we talked about your, your professional network that mm -hmm. helps you out. We talk about uh, branding and brand recognition, logos, that sort of thing. Uh, we talk a little bit about the technology we use in our businesses. I think there's a lot of good stuff in here, and I think they can get a lot of good out of it. Oh, yeah, definitely. Without further ado, here's Dan's story. <laughs> well, Dan, first and foremost, I appreciate you making time Thank you, to, to come and share with us your story. So if you don't mind, share your story with us. Oh, man, how did I get into fencing? Huh? Yeah. Uh, complete accident. <laughs> I wonder how many people say that, huh? <laughs> Um, I was actually running a, uh, a plumbing company, new construction plumbing company, and uh, really started off with a grass business. Okay. I was uh, cutting the grass in my house, swing by a house to check on it, see if it got a, an inspection sticker on it so I could Monday morning know what to do. And the builder was there and I said, hey, man, you cutting grass? I'm like, no. He goes, well, I need you to cut my grass because I got a show in tomorrow. And I'm like, oh, I'll do it. So by the end of that week, I had 20 yards to do. I was like, man, I can make some money. Yeah. So I hit up all my contractors and started cutting their grass. And I hired a kid out of high school to cut with me because I was working a full-time job. And when winter came, he was used to making money, no more money, because uh, it was winter. And I was like, well, do you have any other skills? If you go ahead and do the labor, I'll finance it. And he's like, well, I did some fence work before. So I was like, all right, let's go look at some of your, uh, some of your jobs you did. They were horrible. So I called up a friend of mine that was a contractor. I was like, hey, man, meet me. We're going to roast beef po' boy for lunch. I'm buying. I showed up with a notepad. And I'm like, so how do you build a fence? He's like, oh, you're building a fence at your new house? I was like, well, not really. I'm going to start a fence business, and I need to know how to build a fence. <laughs> he's like, wait a second. You're starting a fence business over a roast beef po' boy? I was like, yeah, man, let's do this. <laughs> Looks like it. So he gave me the, uh, <laughs> he just gave me the fundamentals. And being that I was in construction already, every time I saw a new fence, I jumped out, got out the old Kodak, <laughs> you know, uh -huh. took pictures, pulled measurements, took notes, drew sketches. All right, that's how they're doing it, you know, and I'd have the, job, the, the name of the company by it. And then I got to see who was doing what and what was working. And then I go run by the little Kodak thing and pick up my pictures and match up with it. It was, it was pretty crazy, man. Well, now, Dan, I'll pause and tell, and tell you that you're showing your age. Yeah. When we're talking about <laughs> wind up cameras. <laughs> yeah. So it's funny, man. I still have the, uh, the original phone that I started my business with. Yeah. I have the pictures and the portfolio that I used to go sit at people's kitchen tables. <laughs> It's crazy, and uh, I had a repeat customer from 2005 that called me this year, uh, what is it, 2022? Yeah. And was like, man, I called the phone number on here, and I can't believe you still answered. <laughs> yeah. So she actually gave me a copy of it, have it laminated, so I'm going to make a box with all the things that I started the business with. Yeah. And I, uh, I got off of Amazon an old camera you know <laughs> so i'm gonna put yeah. it all in there so anyway we um uh, i learned how to build a fence over roast beef po' boy and just seeing what my competition was doing mm -hmm. which leads into why i built fence the way i build it and then how i realized i really wasn't building a fence right eventually and now we changed everything that we do but uh it was interesting man um before i knew it i had a grass crew the grass crew would switch trailers and go build fence. And uh, I was like, man, I can make more money building fence, less maintenance. 
So I sold off the grass company, went full time with the uh, with the fencing man. Nice. I remember my first fence job. They just tore it down. Really? Yeah, and that was 23 years ago. They tore it down uh, about two years ago. They redid the fence on this new subdivision and stuff. And I had my old Grass King lawn care and fencing sign on it. And uh, I didn't make a single penny off of that job. Is that right? I didn't. So I was like, who's stupid enough to have me build a fence? <laughs> I mean, I'm running a plumbing company and cut grass. Who's sure. going to have me build a fence, right? So I was like, I know who will. My cheapest contractor, you know? Yeah. So I called him up, and I'm like, right, you're the cheap guy. I'm like, hey, man, I'm starting a fence company. You know, I want to build your fence, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, well, you know, I got such and such. I said, well, how about I do this? You buy the materials and pay me $2 a foot, and I'll build it. Now, this is 1999. Sure, sure. And um, he's like, all right. So then I went to the kid that was working for me. I said, I'll pay you $2 a foot to build this fence. He was like, great. So he built it and it was a disaster. But we fixed it, made it right. Sure. And I didn't make a single dime off of that job, but I learned so much. It was invaluable. Yep. There's lessons I learned from that job that I'm still using here 23 years later. That I'm like, right. yeah, it's, it's crazy. So, um, yeah, man, that's pretty much how I got into the business. Then it became, I got so busy that uh, I ended up having to quit my job and go in full time, you know. My, um, my grass company was called Grass Man. Yeah. Everybody I called, called on my, we had 20-something contractors we worked for. So I'd call them up and like, hey, who's Who's the guy, you know, who's cutting your grass? I don't know who the grass man is. I got to find out. <laughs> I called the next guy. Hey, who's cutting your grass? I don't know who the grass man is. I'm like, Phew, I'm going to be the grass man. Yeah. It's a no-brainer, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so I got me a closed trailer, grass man on it. And then I get a letter in the mail that I was infringing on someone else's name. Oh, no. That was my first lesson in <laughs> business. Uh -huh. So I had to peel man off my new freshly done trailer and I was uh, cutting grass from one of my customers. Man, what happened to your trail? I'm like, oh, well, I didn't know. And they're like, you know what, man? Let him be the man. You be the king. <laughs> I was like, king of fence. <laughs> that fence. Grass king it was. And that's how the fence king came about because then nice. we rolled into fencing, you know? Well, and one thing, too, is, is it also kind of speaks to your area that you service. Right, like here in New Orleans, it's right. I, I never, I had understood the story, but it wasn't until we came down to New Orleans for, for fence tech that you realize like how much the word king is kind of ingrained into kind of the culture down here. It is, it is. So it, it, it makes even more yeah. sense that because all the parades are have kings and queens. That's and, it. That's and, right. Uh, we have king cakes, and you know we even have, uh, you know our, uh, our local what is it? Double A AA or Triple A baseball team is based off of the baby that comes in the king cakes. So, oh, is that right? Yeah, so it's it's a it's a big thing down here. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Mardi Gras is a it's a way of life. Well, I I think that's a pretty good lesson here, Dan. Too is you know for the guys that are just getting ready to start out, the name is a big thing. Right? Oh yeah, it is, and um, you know I see a lot of these guys, you know, and I have friends in the fence company like you know Dan Hardy. He's yeah. got hardy fence. Yeah. I don't get that. Yeah. I don't yeah. get that, you know, or, you know, Bill and Son fencing. Sure. How are you gonna how are you gonna sell that eventually if you're going to? But then yeah. again, it depends on your region. If That's probably a, true. If you're in a rural region, yeah. then you know, Joe and Son is something everybody knows Joe. Sure, sure. So it's sure. marketable. So I think you have to really look at your market and say, yeah. hey, where am I? What am I? What's the best name? Do I put my name in the company? Yeah. Or do I pick a name that's catchy like Ozark Fence? Well, yeah, absolutely. And, and I think you're right. I think it varies depends on region. It varies depending on region that, you know, some regions are very much the, the personal name is the brand. Right. You know, so like your reference, like Hardy Fence, that's Dan Hardy's place, Dan and Sarah right. Hardy. And so the name is the brand. But then you move to other regions where that's not really as yeah, prevalent. Exactly. Right? So... 
Yeah, so our name Ozark Fence came about because, you know, my granddad was and his brother-in-law were picking names. They're like, I don't know, we're in the Ozarks region. Let's just call it Ozark Fence. And there's the name. That was literally the thought that went yeah. into it. Um, but, you know, I think a lot goes into a name. And I think more so now than ever. You know, the name needs to be probably descriptive, but yeah. also unique. Well, not only that, it's got to... There's a lot that goes into that name. You got to look mm -hmm. at the size of it, and you know yeah. you don't want empastados fencing and decking. You know, and <laughs> yeah. you yeah. want to pick something that's printable, yeah. and not just um, not just on documents, but a name that can be embroidered, a sure. name that can be screen printed, yeah. Yeah. a name that your region can re re you know relate to. Yeah, well, and that goes into I've heard you talk about logos, yeah. right? Logos are just as important. In terms of stitching and, and the rest exactly. of Exactly. You know, and a lot of people don't realize that there's a brand and a logo. Your logo consists of your brand. Yep. Your logo is the brand and the words. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, if I put a bullseye on the wall, you know that's target. There's no word. <laughs> yep. And, yep. you know, or if I, or taglines. Taglines are really mm -hmm. important. You know, it, over a billion served. I don't need to tell you that's McDonald's. <laughs> you already know. You already know. That's so right. those things are important when building your fence company and uh, and building a strong brand in your community yeah. to have something. It's just it's important taglines. Yeah. And so forth. Well, and and this all gets kind of complicated, right? Because there is a lot to think about. It's not just the name. The name is incredibly important, but it's also the logo, the brand, mm -hmm. the tagline. It's it's, there's quite a lot that goes into it. Yeah, yeah. So, like, our tagline is, since we're the fence king, I was hashtagging surround yourself with quality. Yeah. Which sounds great. Sure. But then, you know, I hired a marketing company and a guy, you know, you met Benji, does all my marketing, my website and everything. And he said, look, we're changing your tagline. I'm like, what? I work so hard. He's like, no, no. You'll feel like royalty when you're surrounded with quality. Like See, that. now that brings the name together mm -hmm. and everything comes together as one. Fence King, my actual brand with the guy with the crown. Yep. You know, so, um, and that all starts from the beginning. That's something that, you know, these guys are just out building fence and they're building sure. fence. And before you know it, they're two, three, four years into it and they don't have a brand. They don't have a logo and they're not stamping, which a brand is, stamping right. themselves on the community. Well, because I think it's I think it's easy to overlook that in the beginning, right? You say I'm just doing it on the side and doing it on the weekends. It's easy to say I'll look at that later. Mm -hmm. But if you start from the beginning, you don't have to stop and reassess and choose the name, choose the logo, choose the tagline. Well, and I did that for a long time. I mean, I didn't have a logo until uh, Jesus, 2016, 2017. Oh, is that right? Yeah, I mean, I was 16 to 18 years in. Yeah. Didn't have a logo, didn't have a brand. I was just a fence king. Sure. Matter of fact, I was a night. I was a marketing nightmare, because I was the fence king. But I had need a fence on all my trucks with a phone number. Mm -hmm. So back in the day, people didn't know how to get me. So because I wasn't brand aware, I had to have a fence king in the phone book. You remember those days, huh? Yeah, right. A fence right. king ad in the phone book, and I had to have a one liner need a fence. I had to pay for. Because people didn't know who I was. Because they thought they were different companies. Yes. Okay. Because I lost jobs because people were like, well, I, didn't, I, didn't, I couldn't find need offense in the phone book. Uh, so that's showing my age, huh? No, no, no. So all these things really matter. Yeah. Um, and it's something that needs to be thought about. And luckily, you know, here we are in 2022. Yeah. We've got YouTube. You can learn about all these things. Right. I didn't right. have that, man. No. I just, the guys around me that I was in business with or, you know, were my bosses. I just learned from them and watched from them whether they were sure. good at what they did or not. Sure. And it's that a, kind of you around you. that kind of set my tone. Yeah. You know. So. Uh, anyway. So then, if you were to give a if you were to give advice to somebody that is just starting out and getting ready to start out, you know, other than what we talked about the logos and the branding, what piece of advice would you give them, or, or what what might was a maybe. Uh, bump in the road that you had hit that you would try to give some advice on someone uh, not to hit that? Uh, I would say my biggest thing would be your taxes. Okay. okay. That's, that's where I hit a bump. Okay. I was so busy making money, 
you know, you're a one truck, you're working on the truck, you're making money hand over fist, life is sure. good. You know, I went from making thousands a week to now hundreds a week because all that money's going to employees and taxes and, yeah. but we're building a business. Sure. You know, so, um, but your taxes, man, I went like six years without doing my taxes. Oh, wow. That's a nightmare. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I luckily fell upon this tax attorney and he started getting my stuff straight and he's like, hey, you need a good CPA. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, I'll go find one. He said, no, 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 you just don't go find a CPA. You know, he said, if you're having heart problems, you, know, you don't go to the toe doctor. Sure. You go to a cardiologist, right? I was like, mm -hmm. yeah. He said, so you want to get a CPA that specializes in construction because they know the ins and the outs of it. Yeah. I was like, all right. He goes, I have someone for you. I work with him. Okay. So once I got those two guys talking, man, life was great. Yeah. Because I didn't have my CPA saying, look, save your gas receipts. And then I was going to my tax attorney to get my taxes done. He's like, I don't need these receipts. Yeah. Well, the CPA said, no, oh, he doesn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> then I go back to the CPA and say, hey, yeah, the tax attorney said I don't need. Nah, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Save your receipts. Yeah, which is it's a mess. How many times right. have you had that right. over right. the years? Yep. yep. So now I got those guys connected, and then the CPA actually has a insurance agency that has an office in his office. Oh, nice. So now I have my GL and workman's comp in tune with. So yeah. I'm not I'm not on the phone with my workman's comp going. Uh, yeah, I'm looking at my, I think I do this much and the numbers aren't right. And then when they come through the audit, you find out real quick what the numbers <laughs> are. Yeah, yeah. So now I have those three guys in a constant nice. four-way email. I send something to the CPA, my agent sees it, my tax attorney sees it. They all chime in. We're on the same page. Yeah. And now when they, I'm like, come on, give me an audit. I'm ready. <laughs> come on. Because <laughs> you have the team ready. Right, because right. I have a team. So I would say... Having those pieces in place are so important. You know, just don't go out and get your CPA. And just don't go out because my, you know, my buddy has an insurance company or, you know, even like, you know, the AFA has a, has a, um, an insurance company. Yep. Use. Yep. That's right. You know, are those guys going to be talking to your CPA? Are they going to be on the same page? You know, find out if they're going to or if they're willing to. You That's need it. to find those people that work together. God does your taxes, your CPA, mm -hmm. and that. And, and I think that is probably the most important thing, and then building your brand. Yeah. You have to build your brand, and once you build your brand so strong, people just come to you. Sure, sure. You know? Because it's something they know, like, and trust. Exactly. The three pillars of someone doing business with you, they know you, they like you, they trust you. When you start building trust in the community, People start seeing your trucks, seeing your signs. You're doing a good job. Word of mouth. Mm -hmm. You have to keep your brand uh, in front of the, the the public, and that's why yeah. I do sponsored ads on Facebook. I don't yeah. do them. I don't do them to get jobs. Sure. I sure. do them to keep my brand and my name out there. Yeah. So when Bob and Mario over by Joe and Sue's house. Yeah. They're talking about the kid kicking the soccer ball, breaking fence boards. Yeah. Hey, you know, I see the fence king everywhere. I see him on Facebook mm -hmm. called the fence king. That's why I do those sponsored ads. I don't yeah. do it to get Facebook customers. Right. You, you yeah. really are working at being top of mind. Yes. So that when someone either A, needs it, or sees, tell me how often this happens, sees a request for referral on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Who do you know that does this? Right. Now you're top you're on the top of their mind and they can reply back. And then everybody starts tagging fence king, fence yeah. king, fence king, fence king. Yeah. You know, it's like when you go to a farm and you see a cow with a brand on him, you know whose cow it is? That's branding. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. yeah. I mean yeah. it is. So yeah. that's what you want to do with your brand. And you build a strong brand, you could have a guy that's been in town forever. But if you come in and you market right and you brand, I mean, you're golden. And you're good to go. Yeah. Absolutely. It's a big, big deal. Dan, in closing, one of the, one of the last questions I've always asked is, uh, in terms of your success, how much of it would you attribute to hard work, determination, and grit, 
And then how much of it would you attribute to luck? Whew. Not a whole lot of luck, man. Yeah. That's a, that's a consistent answer. It's not that's a whole lot of luck. It's a lot of, uh, a lot of sacrifice, mm. a, lot of, um, a lot of long nights, yeah. you know, when you're first starting off. I mean, when, when I was building my brand back in, you know, 2016, 2017, I would work in my business. I was up at 5 a.m., go fence, knock off 4 or 5 o'clock in the afternoon, eat dinner, 6, 7, 8 o'clock, do estimates, and until 12, 1 o'clock working my brand. Yeah. Setting up my processes, my procedures. Yeah. And this went on for months, you know. And uh, so it's a lot of work. You know, I love it when people say, oh, it must be nice. <laughs> and I'm like, it, it is, it really is nice, you know. It's because I decided to do that sacrifice. Yeah. You know, I'll tell Pepper, hey, for the next 90 days, we're not doing anything. I'm focusing on this, and once we conquer this, we're gonna do whatever you want. Sure, sure. And I'm fortunate enough to have a woman that's gonna support me in that. Yeah. I'll be working, and she'll come in with a snack. She'll come in with a drink, and she's like, "You do realize it's midnight, huh?" <laughs> and I'm like, "No, I didn't." You know. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, yeah that's a big thing. Support from your uh, your partner. Absolutely. You know. Yeah, you know, and, and the reason I ask that question is because I think. Uh, I think there's a tendency maybe from the outside looking in to say, well, I really got lucky. Huh. That's because, in general, people don't see the hard work, grit, and determination. Right? No, they don't. They don't at all. They just, oh, man, they want what you have. Yeah. Yeah, right. Well, right. Let, let's sit down and talk about how I got what I had. Well, yeah, in your case, luck took 20 years, 20 plus years of hard work and determination. Right, it was a twenty-year well, process to become an overnight success. And if I would have had the knowledge I had today, you know, ima imagine if we had social media, YouTube, and the culture that we have right now. Yeah, yeah. In 1999, by 2005, I'd probably be as big as I am right now. Sure, sure. It literally, not having the technology stunted my growth. Well, yeah, because now we can communicate in near real time. Right. Right. And so, and you're one of the guys that are in the Facebook group sharing all of what you have. Right. So saying, yeah, hey, I'll lay it all out. Right. Whether you love me or hate me. <laughs> <laughs> well, but no, but that's to your point. If someone had been like that in 99 and you could have learned from them, things would have come a lot quicker. Well, that's amazing. Here we are in 2022. And yeah. People putting it out there, and there's still guys going, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. And it's like, <laughs> man, you sound, I mean, yeah. you're yeah. stuck in 1999. Well, and, and I think and I think there are those that are. I think there are those that are. But I think more so, I think there's folks like us that are out here to try to help make the industry better, right? Mm -hmm. Because the rising tide raises all the ships, Yeah. right? And Definitely. so... What's good for the industry, what's good for our community, also happens to be good for us. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, no, I, I asked the question because I, I think there's, uh, I think it's easy to see from the outside looking in that it looks like luck. Right. But they miss that 20 plus years of hard work determination. Oh, yeah, man. Rough. I mean, I wouldn't say it was rough, but I look back on it today and I'm glad I'm not doing it again. I'm sure parts of it were. Well, I mean, I... The way I look at it is what you and I are doing in the, you know, the YouTube world, the social media world, the podcast yeah. world. Yeah. We can maybe help some people, yeah. the ones that are willing to learn. Mm -hmm. We can save you so much misery. Right. Right. By just getting you on track. And I'm not saying everything I do is right or everything you do is right, but you're going to take something from everybody That's right. and build what's right for you in your region, in your business model. Well, I, I think that's kind of what we're all saying, right? Is I'm not telling you this is the way. I'm showing you that this is a way, right? Right, And you can apply it to your situation or not, but I'm gonna share with you that way, right? So that maybe you can take something and to your point, avoid some of the headache and heartache. Yeah, this is what we. This is how we do it in our region. Sure. You know, and, and that's it. And look, man, I, I've completely changed the way I do things in the past year. I can look back at where I was a year ago and go, 
man, you know, I, I was doing that and thought it was right. Yeah. But then I run across somebody like you or, you know, a Sean or one of these other guys, you know, and, and I listen to them and I'm like, wait, I need to change that. Sure. Or cannon in my ear, you know. Yep. Hey, yep. man, you're doing that wrong. What? <laughs> you know, tell me, what am I doing wrong? Right. Jump on a Zoom and, is that amazing? Just get on a Zoom. <laughs> yeah. I can see your computer screen. Look at this. Look at, oh, <laughs> light bulb. Well, yeah. So <laughs> I think the guys that are that are just starting out, new to the industry, um, I luckily I think that they have a, a leg up because they have this support network or this you know this group of mentors or advisors uh, that are willing to just help for nothing. Right. Yeah. To, I mean, to give back to the community. And the technology they have. Yeah. Man, we were, I, I ran my business. I have a notebook and a, and a, and a, a week planner. Sure. A month planner. Yeah. You know, yeah. now we have our phones with <laughs> CRMs in them. And <laughs> well, I mean, so crazy. a couple of days ago when we got to New Orleans, I came up to your room and you had these massive monitors <laughs> yeah. running, running your business remotely Yeah. from the convention. Yeah. Yeah. And then I've got, I've got four appointments tomorrow. Yeah. Guys coming up there just to see how we're running our business, yeah. using our using our software. I mean, I don't leave the office now, and I'm bidding yeah. jobs, and I don't even leave the office. Sure, I, I would literally sell a job and never step foot on it. Yep. Yep. It's, it's something you wouldn't imagine doing ten years uh, ago, five no. years ago. Yeah, no. So I, I think you're right. I think, and I'm excited to see where the technology goes. Me too. You know, if it's like this today, what's it going to be five years from now? Well, look at look at what we're seeing at uh, at Fence Tech. Mm -hmm. Things that, you know, six months ago I was on Facebook and people were going, man, I'm just starting my fence business. You know, what softwares would I get? And I was like, well, if it was me, my salesman, yeah, and I couple it with ArcSight. Yeah, I've been saying that for six months. I did a demo with ArcSight last week. And they're like, so, you know, we noticed you've been saying on Facebook and in the background, we're connecting and partnering with my salesman yeah. and we're going to be in integration with them. And I'm like, mind blown, <laughs> you know, but yeah. yeah, it's so we come here and we see two software companies that were over here. One of the software companies was a roofing software company that was yeah. now in the fencing and hooking up with one of the major software tools that fence companies are using yeah. to estimate. So it's constantly evolving. Next year, sure. it'll be something completely different. That's right. And we'll be sitting here going, dude. Can you imagine can you how life was before yes. this? Yes, <laughs> exactly. Absolutely. exactly. I'm excited to see where it goes. Me too, man. Me too. So. Well, Dan, I appreciate your time. I really do. Thank you. Guys, I'm Joe Everest, Dan Blanc, and we're reminding you that good fences make good neighbors. And we'll catch you next time.